An essential part of navigation is describing the direction we would need to travel to reach another point starting from our current location. And we can describe a direction from our location in various ways. We can use a cardinal direction on a compass, north, south, west or east. Or an intercardinal direction that lies in between, northeast, southeast, southwest or northwest. We could bisect these directions further, giving directions like north-northeast or west-southwest. But a more accurate way to describe a direction is with a bearing. A true bearing is the clockwise angle from north expressed as three digits. North is given the bearing of 000, zero, zero degrees. So this direction which makes a 45 degree clockwise angle from north has a true bearing of 045 degrees. This direction makes a 205 degree clockwise angle from north and so has a true bearing of 205 degrees. And this direction, which makes a 305 degree clockwise angle from north has a bearing of 305 degrees. Another way of expressing a direction is with a compass bearing. This uses the smallest angle we must turn from the north-south line towards either the west or east. For example, this direction is a 55 degree turn from north towards the west. We write the compass bearing as north 55 degrees west. This direction is a 55 degree turn from south towards the east. We write the compass bearing as south 55 degrees east. Throughout the rest of this video, we'll only be using true bearings for directions, the clockwise angle from north given as three digits. So, let's assume we're located at A and want to give the direction towards B as a bearing. We refer to this as the bearing of B from A because it's the direction we need to travel to reach B, starting from A. Measuring the clockwise angle from north gives this bearing as 065 degrees. Now, if we're located at B and want the bearing needed to return to A, that is, the bearing of A from B, then we can use angle relationships to work this out from the original bearing. If we draw a line south from point B, we can identify these alternate angles. And by adding 180 degrees, we get the bearing of A from B is 245 degrees. Looking at another example, if we're located at P and want to give the direction towards Q as a bearing, that is the bearing of Q from P, then we measure this angle, giving the bearing of Q from P as 315 degrees. Now, if we're located at Q and want the bearing needed to return to P, that is the bearing of P from Q, then we again use angle relationships to work this out from the original bearing. These angles are co-interior and so they add to 180 degrees. If we subtract the original bearing from 360 degrees, we get this 45 degree angle. And that makes this angle equal to 180 minus 45, or 135 degrees. Therefore, the bearing of P from Q is 135 degrees.